Creativity will define the future. A statistic by the World Economic Forum says 65% of jobs elementary school students are going to have in the future do not exist yet. I want you to ponder on this. We're in the midst of a third and fourth industrial revolution. And the next 30 years of our life is going to be radically different. I'm 27 now. And in 30 years, I'll be 57. And I don't know about you, but I remember the floppy disks. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the dial-up internet, kind of waiting in the computer for the sound. I remember the old movies, the graphics, the games. It seemed to have flown by so fast. All the past technological revolution from electricity, the steam engine, from communications and the internet, they've changed our world. But there's still a lot of problems that exist in our society. We have extreme climactic events that are changing our ecosystem, our forests, our coral reefs. I remember last year when I read the news of the last male northern white rhino extinct, gone. There's thousands of other species I probably not have heard of. They're gone, and we caused this. Though our quality of life has improved tremendously, for sure, there's still a wide inequality gap that is rising. Depression is on the rise. We live in a society where we're flooded by information every day, and yet we're starving for wisdom. And now, with the Internet of Things, with this new fourth industrial revolution, where our biological or physical or digital spaces are being merged all together, I think we need to take a pause. Because we don't want that to fly by again. I believe the fourth industrial revolution that we're going to witness, or we are witnessing right now, it is the greatest opportunity we've been afforded as a species to reimagine it all. Our communities, how we connect with one another, how we treat each other, people who are different than us, our activism, how we go out on the streets, how do we engage social issues that we care about, our democracy, how do we govern ourselves, how do we bring issues to light and make it equitable? Our environment, how we treat each other in the connection with the planet. Our education, how we teach our kids, how we do business across the world. We have to reimagine it all. A show of hands. How many of you in the room are connected to, uh, social, to social media? I think that's 99.9% .9 of the room. <laughs> How many of you feel more connected than your grandparents? OK, that's about 94, 93%. Um, how many of you feel profoundly connected to your workforce, the workplace? OK, that's about 30%. How many of you, of you Think of yourself as creatives. OK, wow, that's about 50% of the room. Um, well, I want to tell you a story. I moved to the United States in 2004 with my mom and dad, my little brother and older brother. And we moved to a small town in South Florida. And we were fairly middle class in Haiti. And we moved here in poverty. My dad working multiple jobs, day in and day out, just to make ends meet. My mom working odd jobs while we're learning a new language, while we're trying to engage an entirely new culture. 
But my parents believed that my brothers and I, whatever we dreamed, we could achieve it. We could become it. I was hungry. I believed it too. I believed that if, if I wanted to walk on the moon, touch the craters, walk and look at the stars and see the pale blue earth of our planet, I could do it. I could become an astronaut. I could do it. I also be, believe that if I could start a business in technology and become fabulously rich, I could do it. <laughs> but what I failed to notice is that going about it alone, that was the wrong way. The I needed to be we. Collaboration was the key. I had to look, I had to find my own story, my own myth, and the people I look up to, the heroes I look up to. Toussaint Louis Vuitton, one of the founding fathers of the Haitian Republic. Ada Love, of Love, Lovelace, one of the first programmers, female programmers, a hundred years before the internet was even conceived of. Steve Jobs, Pablo Picasso. These individuals didn't do it by themselves. They had an entire team around them. Did you know Picasso had 40 assistants <laughs> following him around, making sure everything was going according to plan? Steve Jobs didn't do it by himself. He had an entire team of people around him. He collaborated. We don't do this by ourselves. What these greats had is the ability to pursue what excited them unbashedly. The willingness to follow their curiosity, the willingness to use their mind and their creativity and collaborate with people who are different than them. That's what they had. Growing up, I fell in love with stories and fiction writing as well. I worked in a library for about five years and I was surrounded by books. And these books, literally, I could be sitting somewhere and I was able to travel across the world into imaginary worlds as well as all across different countries. Through these books, I learned how to live. I was so passionate about writing. I love writing so much that I felt like I kept hitting a wall when I started writing. And I realized that creativity is not a solitary act. It, it's a collaborative experience. This is why I started a small company. And our mission is to connect writers across the world to collaborate and create stories and fiction stories. Because what I realized that across history, when you look at movements such as the Beat Generation with Jack Kerouac or in Allen's Gibberg, you look at the Harlem Renaissance with Langston Hughes, you look at the Lost Generation, American writers in Paris with Gertrude Stein. When artists, creators, people come together, share ideas, collaborate, these artistic movies, they created social and intellectual explosion that moved humanity forward. And that's what I want to recreate using the internet in a space such as syllable. From humble beginnings in my DC apartment, we've grown to over 130 writers from across the world, and we're continuing to grow. And we're proud to have published the first fiction book written by four writers from four different continents. The Middle East, Latin America, North America, and Europe. Creativity will define the future. Creativity is the industry that is going to be the most resistant in this age of machine. I heard a story that if you put human civilization in the backdrop of the Big Bang that is 13.7 billion years old on a 365-day calendar, humans have only existed for the last minute 
on December 31st, 1159. That's what I want to propose, that we are the primitive of our own life. We are imperfect species striving for perfectibility in a very imperfect world. Our story is yet to be un it unwritten. Yet in the modern world, we insist on our education to live through a profession where we follow a series of procedures and processes and we don't really end up using our thinking at all. The human being is a creative thinking being and we should not be brought up like a dog in relation to their trainer, only to be rewarded when we obey. What we have here, the creative mind, our creative thinking, it's an equipment, and we have to sharpen it. Because in this age of machine right now, we have to create this future. This, this future is, is, is with you all, with your collaborations, with your ideas. You have to invest in your mind. And for those in the, this room that didn't raise their hands, that you didn't believe you were creative or creatives, I say, why not? I say, why not? You have to explore your imperfections. You have to build an inner life. You have to understand your values. What do you stand for? Why do you wake up every single day? So much is yet unwritten. In this backdrop of this disruption that's going to happen with technology, it is a moral obligation and the responsibility we have to create this future. I challenge you. I want to leave you with a challenge. Create something new. Be willing to working together. Believe you are creative because it is the greatest opportunity we have to change the world. Thank you.